Hi, I'm JT Von Lunen, President of RMUS, and I'm here today with FX, the Sales Director for Parrot in the Americas. And we're going to show you the Anafi AI. Uh, it has 4G connectivity and is a, a product that's going to be available in the next few months here. So FX, tell me a little bit about the 4G connectivity that this has. Yeah, so the 4G connectivity that we've developed here, I mean, we've worked very closely with uh, Skyward and Verizon for this product. Uh, Anafi AI is designed and optimized for Verizon, uh, and it's even coming with a SIM card in the drone from Verizon. Um, carrier network optimization for UAVs operation is not a small thing. Uh, a tremendous amount of work has been done by Verizon and Perth teams to make sure operating the UAV in 4G work seamlessly and effectively. Um, it's the first uh, of its kind connected drone. Uh, Perth NFE AI is powered by Verizon 4G LTE and integrated with Skyward software to pave the way for near real-time data transfer, remote deployment, and beyond visual line of sight operations. So that, that's pretty amazing. So just think what we have here. You have the remote talking, you know, communicating with the drone like we've done for a long time in the RC world. But that, all that command and control is being pushed through the LTE networks and doing, that's happening very rapidly to be able to have that you know, control of the drone. So that, that's pretty amazing FX. So not only are we, we talking about you know, having data flow through the network and being able to process that off-site, but we also have some redundancies built in that you know, is another safety factor that really hasn't been addressed before, right? Yeah, so what we've done is that we wanted people to have connectivity between the ground control station and the drone at all times. So when you start with the drone, basically you're going to have the dual connection set up. You're going to have the Wi-Fi connection in 2.45 gigahertz and you're going to have the 4G connection. Okay, they, they work in parallel. And when the drone is operating, the drone is going to scan the environment and understand the disturbances ar ar around the drone and check every 100 millisecond about it. And so switch automatically from one to the other so the user is always having the best connectivity uh, in order to do the operation he's doing. Wow, okay. So an AFI AI, what is the AI piece of this? We know we have the uh, 4G connectivity. Can you explain a little more about that? Yeah, so an AFI AI, I mean the AI, we need to understand AI here in a sense of autonomy capability. Um, we focused on making the customer experience unique to a point where the workflow becomes super easy. Um, think about it for mapping missions, for example. So Free Flight 7, the new app control for Anafi AI, uh, is integrating a photogrammetry flight planning mode. Within this mode, we have an option called one-click mapping. With one-click mapping, you can just find the building that you want to map from a base map. You're going to click on this building and automatically the flight plan for the mission is going to be created. The next thing is to fly the UAV and you will be doing this with peace of mind thanks to the unique obstacle avoidance mm -hmm. system we have here. While flying autonomously the UAV is capturing the data but also sending it in almost real time to your Pix4D cloud account. Wow, thanks okay. to the 4G capability again. So the 4G okay. is kind of like dual capability. It's giving you the connectivity, but it's also giving you the opportunity to upload data directly from the craft to the cloud. Okay. So you, you, you're flying autonom autonomously and automatically, you're capturing the data, the data is sent to the cloud, and while you're still flying, the data is actually starting to process in the cloud in the meantime. So this result is having in, in having a complete uh, autonomous mapping mission already processing when you, as the pilot, are still on the field. Uh, all of this is autonomous and automatic, and so that's, that's, that's why we are actually putting the NFE AI term in, into it. Yeah, that. gotcha, gotcha. Wow, okay. So not only is this going to help with uh, you know, some of the safety factors and redundancies, we're also talking about you know, limiting that processing time because you're capturing the data and processing it very quickly uh, before you even have to take a card out and put it into a processor, correct? Exactly. Great, great. Okay, well, cool thing is we're going to take the NAFIA out in the field right now, and we're going to have Jace and Peter go over that. All right, so we're out here at the field with Peter. He's the programs coordinator for Parrot in the United States, and we're out here with the Anafi AI. And uh, we kind of just want to go over some highlights and stuff like that. Obviously, you know, let's talk about a couple things. The camera is 
moving on to the next generation. You know, give us kind of a little bit of an idea about that. Absolutely. Well, Jace, we have, uh, you know, the first 4G quadcopter available, you know, publicly, commercially uh, here with us today. This is the Anafi AI. Uh, this aircraft is built really with inspection in mind. It has a super powerful 48 megapixel camera on board, obstacle avoidance, which we'll get into in a little bit. Right. And uh, the 4G connectivity, you know, really takes that, that iffiness about getting close to cell towers and wires, and uh, it kind of uses that to its advantage. Exactly. So that's the thing about the, the 4G connectivity and what, what people are kind of interested in a little bit and what really makes this aircraft unique is, and, and we all know that the kind of beyond visual line of sight thing, it's coming down the rails, it's just kind of is in its infancy now. And right. it seems like this is going to start laying the groundwork to make kind of those operations possible, it seems like. Absolutely. With the 4G, we have no more limit on, on the amount of range that we can. It's really just uh, regulations and, and sticking to it is the uh, only boundary there. Sure. And, well, and the other half of that is uh, obstructions. Right? right, so we're on the other side of a building. We're on the other side of a of a transmission tower, a cell tower, or or uh, some type of high power electrical line and stuff like that. Yes. Um, yes. Obviously, a lot of people have had pains with that type of operation, right. but this with the should should take us a long way to mitigating that problem. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. That's what we've done here. And then uh, additionally, the only other thing you could worry about is uh, really rain coming on onto you while you're further away and not being able to notice it. And uh, what Parrot and uh, we have done is uh, put an IP53 rating on there. Right. So we're prevented from dust and uh, rain as well. That's awesome, perfect. So then, yeah. and then the other thing we wanna talk about, and this is another one of those points that is really very interesting, is that obstacle avoidance that we talked about. Uh, just a minute. So kind of give us a little brief rundown of how that kind of functions. Yeah, absolutely. So we have the aircraft on actually in your hand. So you'll see it's in this interesting configuration with the uh, main camera pointed down and the two scare, uh, stereo, uh, stereoscopic. <laughs> stereoscopic cameras pointed up. So the, these are our obstacle avoidance cameras on the top here and they're making sure that there's nothing on top of you uh, that could possibly hinder you from taking off. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they move around and they check out uh, the area in front of you, behind you, to the left of you or to the right of you, uh, wherever it may be before you fly there. So they'll move in the direction of your flight before you start moving in right. that direction. Right. So, and then going a step beyond that, uh, what you see when this is flying, and we'll show B-roll of this, is that the cameras, they kind of, they move back and forth. Uh, they'll orient down, then they'll go straight up, then forward, and they, they move back and forth. And what it's doing is, um, the simple way I can think of it is, is kind of a slam-esque type of thing. It's kind of, right. it's taking a stock or measurement of its environment and kind of building a 3D type of a map. That's and right. that's what it's using for its obstacle avoidance as opposed to something like, like an IR sensor or something like that that's on the side of the aircraft, right? Yeah, that's exactly right, Chase. Yeah, so it's creating that 3D environment around you as you fly and memorizing where obstacles are and uh, geotagging them and, and creating that environment so it uh, won't run into any obstacles. Exactly, though, that's perfect. I mean, it's great to see lots of new, you know, several, not just one, but several new developing pieces of technology that's being integrated into a new aircraft. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, that's a really a big look at, at kind of the, the highlights, the, the key details that it seems like uh, with the Anafi AI. So thanks for awesome. coming out and giving us a, giving us a look and, and letting us spend some time and getting this aircraft in the air. And it really feels very nice. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having us. For sure. Now we have some more in-depth information on the Anafi AI. Uh, in the next few months, we'll be bringing more and more um, features to you via our Tech Connect videos and some webinars. So if you're interested in pricing, please contact the RMUS sales team. And FX, let us know a little bit about availability. Yeah, so um, the big news is that as of today, NFEI is available for pre-orders. So customers can just reach out to RMUS and place their orders for the platform. Excellent, okay. Yeah, when you place your orders, we'll have some ETAs on delivery dates, and thanks again for coming to visit us, FX. Yeah, good to see you.